Ezio is charm in human form if that human form had stupid hair. Bayek is the most three-dimensional character in the series, protagonist or not. Cassandra, well, Cassandra is Cassandra. Playful, funny, I mean, she's literally a Spartan warrior. What more could you want? Ezio has the advantage of being in three games, from him coming into this world to dying a sad old man, we saw everything. Cassandra has the advantage of being in a game that ran longer than a successful daytime soap opera. Seriously, Odyssey is about 10 times as long as AC2 and Origins put together. Bayek is a very inspiring character. He went through a real tragedy, not the sappy losing a parent. Other than losing all your limbs, I seriously cannot imagine a greater tragedy than seeing a little boy die in your arms and bonus points because he was the one that put him there. Edward K. Altair and even Arno were up there but other than Edward being a swashbuckling pirate, Altair being the legend that keeps getting mentioned and Arno being a French Ezio, they really don't have much going on for them. The only protagonists I have truly hated in the series are the Fry Twins. Screwing up both leads in one game is quite an achievement even by Ubisoft standards. Cassandra is the lead in the most light-hearted AC game. There's always upbeat music in the background, everyone and everything is a joke. Getting your nose broken? Ha ha. Getting hunted down? Ha ha ha. Or something infinitely worse? Ha ha. The game truly has an amazing tone when nothing is taken seriously. I guess it's a Greek thing because Ubisoft went with the same tone for Immortals Phoenix Rising and they did it even better there. After you've seen Zeus cracking shitty one-liners, there really isn't much to see in life. Odyssey being the first true RPG means you have more control over Cassandra, but because it is Ubisoft, you don't. No matter what your choice is, Cassandra is pretty much her own self, and thank god her own self is pretty great. Most characters in Odyssey are really well voice acted, Cassandra being the best. But it's not just that. It's also how expressive everyone is and their body language. Everyone looks human and not like a shy, socially inept student who's forced to go on stage. Ezio goes through some pretty big changes throughout the trilogy. But his smarmy, arrogant, goofy self in AC2 is him at his best. He's not too bad in Revelations either. He had finally become someone who belonged in the same sentence as Altair. And since we literally witnessed his first cry, it's kind of like your boy making it. You can live vicariously through him and not think about your miserable existence for a second. But even so, he was at his best before all the tragedies. In fact, the first section of AC2 before he even dons his assassin's outfit is my favorite. He grows and kind of becomes Altair. There are a few quips here and there, but he is a serious, serious, serious man who talks in grunts and nods, at least for a while. I don't care what you say, Altair and Ezio in the same room in Revelations is the most ambitious crossover ever. Not Endgame, but Ezio and Altair's carcass. When he calls Mr. Ibn Lahat his brother, you just had to shed a few man tears. This is why I love Ezio's character. Yeah, he's fun and funny, but we got to see a complete arc. Many protagonists have had multiple games spanning multiple decades, but Ezio had three games that came out in the span of two years, but we saw everything. That connection to a character in a game is very rare. Origins has never excited me. Assassin's Creed in general. Since 2014, I have loved only three things in the series. Bayek, Ancient Greece and Cassandra. It was a solid game all around, but let's be honest, Pai carried it all the way through. It would have been a real disaster without him. He doesn't feel like a video game character. He's a very real guy wandering Egypt 2400 years ago, climbing pyramids, fighting lions and cracking dad jokes. If any AC protagonist needed a therapist, he would be it. The man will put Tony Soprano to shame with his anger problems. He is consumed by guilt, yet interacts with everyone like he's been walking on rainbows, which is a little sociopathic, but he has his own non-mainstream charm. I mean, charm isn't always a handsome Italian with stupid hair. 
His story is very basic. He's on a mission for vengeance, but instead of going the Aiden Pierce route where his whole personality revolves around his guilt and revenge, Baek has time to go fight crocodiles for a whim and fight for him when he gets caught up in the stupidest con ever. Aiden was almost a robot focused on one thing and one thing only, and I actually enjoyed the story. But usually an emotional savage doesn't work in a 60-hour game. A 2-hour movie? Sure, it'll be great. But if you have to spend dozens of hours with a protagonist who talks in monosyllables and has only one thing on his mind, it will get old really fast. Those are all the reasons I think Baek is the best protagonist in the series. I can already sense your rage, but between punching your screen and smashing the dislike button, just leave a comment on who you think is the best. Origins might have the best protagonist, but which Assassin's Creed has the best combat? Click on the video on screen to find out.